Once upon a time in the middle of winter, a queen sat at a window sewing, and the frame of the window was made of black ebony. And while she was sewing and looking out of the window at the snow, she pricked her finger with the needle, and three drops of blood fell upon the snow. The red looked pretty upon the white snow, and she thought to herself, I wish I had a child, skin as white as snow, lips red as blood, and hair black as the wood of the window frame. Soon after that she had a little daughter, who is indeed everything she had asked for, and when the child was born, the queen died. After a year had passed, the king took to himself another wife. She was a beautiful woman, but proud and haughty, and she could not bear that anyone else should surpass her in beauty. She had a wonderful looking-glass, and when she stood in front of it, looked at herself and said, Looking-glass, looking-glass on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? The looking-glass always answered, Thou, O queen, art the fairest of all. But Snow White was growing up, and grew more and more beautiful with every day. And once again the queen asked her looking-glass, Looking-glass, looking-glass on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? It answered, Thou art fairer than all who are here, but more beautiful still is Snow White, I fear. From that hour she hated the girl so much, the queen called a huntsman and said, Take the child away into the forest. Kill her. Bring me back her lung and liver as a token. But Snow White was so beautiful, the huntsman had pity on her and said, Run away then, you poor child. The wild beasts will soon devour you. At that moment, a young bear came running by, and the huntsman stabbed it, cut out its lung and liver, and took them to the queen as proof that the child was dead. The cook had to salt them, and the wicked queen ate them, and thought she had eaten the lung and liver of Snow White. But now the poor child was all alone in the great forest, and so terrified that she looked at all the leaves on the trees and did not know what to do. Then she began to run, and she ran over sharp stones and through thorns, and the wild beast ran past her, but did her no harm. She ran as long as her feet would go until it was almost evening. Then she saw a little cottage and went in to rest herself. There was a table on which was a white cover, and seven little plates, and on each plate a little spoon. Moreover, there were seven little knives and forks, and seven little mugs. Against the wall stood seven little beds, side by side, covered with snow-white blankets. Little Snow White was so hungry and thirsty that she ate some vegetables and bread. She made sure to drink wine from every mug, as she did not want to take from just one. Then, as she was so tired, she laid herself down on one of the little beds, said a prayer, and went fast to sleep. When it was quite dark, the owners of the cottage came back. They were seven dwarves who dug and delved in the mountains for ore. They lit their seven candles, and as it was now light within the cottage, they saw that someone had been there, for everything was not in the same order in which they had left it. The seventh looked at his bed and saw Snow White lying asleep. He called to the others who came running, and they cried out with astonishment and brought their seven little candles and let the light fall on Snow White. But they were friendly and asked her what her name was. When she had told them her story, the dwarves insisted that she stay with them, so long as she cook and clean. Snow White agreed, and the dwarves warned her and said, Beware of your stepmother. She will soon know that you are here. Be sure to let no one come in while we are gone. But the queen, believing that she had eaten Snow White's lung and liver, again thought that she was the most beautiful of all, and went to her looking-glass and said, Looking glass, looking glass on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? And the glass answered, O queen, thou art fairest of all I see, but over the hills where the seven dwarfs dwell, Snow White is still alive and well. She thought again how she might kill her, and when she had at last thought of something to do, she dressed herself like an old peddler woman, and no one could have known her. Before long she came upon the little cottage, crying, Pretty things for sale. Little Snow White looked out of the window and called out, Good things, pretty things, answered the lady, laces of all colors, and she pulled one out of brightly colored silk. Snow White had no suspicion and stood before the old woman to allow herself to be laced with the new laces. But the old woman laced so quickly and so tightly that Snow White lost her breath and fell down as if dead. 
Now I am the most beautiful, said the queen to herself, and she ran away. Not long afterwards, the seven dwarfs came home, and how shocked they were when they saw their dear Snow White lying on the ground, appearing to be dead. They lifted her up, and they saw that she was laced too tightly. They cut the laces, and she began to breathe again. When the dwarfs heard what had happened, they said that old peddler woman was no one else than the wicked queen. Take care, and let no one come in when we are not with you. But the wicked woman, when she reached home, went in front of her glass and asked, Looking glass, looking glass on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? And it answered as before, O queen, thou art fairest of all I see, but over the hills where the seven dwarfs dwell, Snow White is still alive and well. When she heard that, all her blood rushed to her heart with fear, for she saw plainly that Snow White was alive again. By the help of witchcraft, she made a poisonous comb. Then she disguised herself and took the shape of another old woman. Little Snow White looked out of the cottage and said, Go away, I cannot let anyone in. But you can look, said the old woman, and she pulled out the poisonous comb. When they had made a bargain, the old woman said, Now I will comb your hair properly. Poor little Snow White had no suspicion and let the old woman do as she pleased, but hardly had she put the comb in her hair when the poison took its effect and the girl fell down senseless. When the dwarfs came home and saw Snow White lying as if dead upon the ground, they at once suspected the stepmother and looked around and found the poisoned comb. Scarcely had they taken it out when Snow White came to and told them what happened. They warned her once more to be on her guard and to open the door to no one. When she got home, the queen consulted her mirror, and when she heard the same answer she had heard before, she trembled and shook with rage. Snow White shall die if it costs me my life, she vowed. Right away she went into a secret, quiet, lonely room where no one ever came, and she made a very poisonous apple. When the apple was ready, she painted her face and dressed herself up as a farmer's wife, so she went over the seven mountains to the seven dwarves' cottage. Snow White put her head out of the window and said, I cannot let anyone in. It's all the same to me, answered the woman. I shall soon get rid of my apples. Here, I'll give you one. No, said Snow White, I dare not take anything. Are you afraid of poison, said the old woman? Look, I will cut the apple into two pieces. You eat the red side, I will eat the white. The apple was so cunningly made that only one cheek was poisoned. When she saw that the woman ate half of it, Snow White could resist no longer and stretched out her hand to take the other poisonous half. But hardly had she bit into it than she fell down dead. The queen looked at her with a dreadful look and laughed aloud and said, White as snow, red as blood, black as ebony wood, this time the dwarves will not wake you up again. And when she asked the looking glass at home, looking glass, looking glass on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? It answered at last, O queen, in this land thou art fairest of all, and her envious heart was at rest. The dwarfs found Snow White lying upon the ground, breathing no longer and dead. They lifted her up, looked to see whether they could find anything poisonous, but it was all of no use. The poor child was dead and remained that way for many days. They were going to bury her, but she still looked as if she were living, and still had pretty red cheeks. They said, we could not bury her in the dark ground. So they had a transparent coffin of glass made, so that she could be seen from all sides. They wrote her name upon it in gold letters, and that she was a king's daughter. Birds came too, and wept for Snow White, first an owl, then a raven, and at last a dove. And Snow White lay a long, long time in the coffin, and she did not change, but looked as if she were asleep, for she was as white as snow, as red as blood, and her hair was as black as ebony. It happened, however, that a king's son came into the forest. He saw the coffin on the mountain and the beautiful Snow White within, and read what was written upon it in gold letters. Then he said to the dwarves, let me have the coffin. I will give you whatever you want for it, for I cannot live without seeing Snow White. And the prince spoke in such a way that the good dwarfs took pity on him and gave him the coffin. Now the king's son had the coffin carried away by his servants on their shoulders. 
and it so happened that they stumbled over a tree stump, and as the coffin fell, the shock shook the poisonous piece of apple out of Snow White's throat. Before long she opened her eyes, lifted up the lid of the coffin, sat up, and was once more alive. Oh heavens, where am I? she cried. The king's son, full of joy, said, I love you more than anything in the world. Come with me to my father's palace. You shall be my wife. And Snow White was willing, so she went with him. Now Snow White's wicked stepmother had also been bidden to the wedding feast. She went before her looking-glass and said, Looking-glass, looking-glass, on the wall, who in this land is the fairest of all? The glass answered, O queen, of all here the fairest art thou, but the young queen is fairer by far, I vow. At first she would not go to the wedding at all, but she had no peace, she had to go and see the young queen. And when she went in, she recognized Snow White, and she stood still and shook with rage and fear. But iron slippers had been put upon the fire, and they were brought in with tongs and set before her. Then the wicked stepmother was forced to put on the red-hot shoes, and she danced until she dropped down dead. Thank you.